Hello! I'm going to tell you the story about my very first craft show. This is 10 years ago. I was new and naive and I had no idea what I was doing. So I hope that you can take this story and either commiserate with me because maybe you've just done your first craft show this last year and you're thinking to yourself, oh my goodness, is that only me that found that that was a total disaster? Or maybe you have your first craft show coming up and you're kind of nervous and you just want someone to come alongside and be there with you and uh, empathize with you with the whole experience. And uh, don't worry, you're going to do great. Uh, ignore me uh, and my disaster story. But uh, yeah, speaking of, let's get Hi. started. I'm Amy, a potter with over a decade of experience making and selling pottery. But Enough about me. I'm here to help you grow your crafty business and teach you a little bit about making pottery too. So let's get started. All right, I've titled this video, The Good, The Bad, and The Lucky, because I think I got really lucky with my first craft show, and I'll explain why throughout this video. But let me set the scene for you. It was 2013, a young, naive potter was selling her pottery on the Halifax waterfront during the summertime. And this was her first experience ever selling pottery. And she didn't know what on earth she was doing, but she was doing it anyways. So uh, that was me. Uh, 2013, I'm starting to sell my pottery for the very first time. And I got this uh, vending license to set up a little plastic table down on the Halifax waterfront where all the tourists would walk by and I could sell my pottery there. I only went on sunny days. I only went when I had pottery to sell. So it was a very casual setup, but I had some really good conversations with the customers and the people who were walking by. So I was starting to um, really understand what people were looking for in let's say a cup or a bowl and I was taking that and I had a good sort of like understanding after two months of what I wanted to make and I had a good understanding I thought of what people were looking so, for. This time in my life I had no kids my husband and I were living at my parents' house actually for a little bit because we wanted to start looking to buy our first house. So we had life pretty easy. Um, I was doing a little bit of substitute teaching to try to supplement my pottery income, but neither one was really stacking up. But luckily my husband had just got his first full-time job. So, and we were able to still save money because we had moved in with my parents' house. Working on the waterfront, I made friends with a couple of the other vendors. There was this one vendor, Steve, where he had been selling jewelry for 10 years. And he really kind of took me under his wing that summer and gave me a lot of tips, gave me a lot of advice. He was really, really nice. Steve, if you're listening, hi, love you, buddy. Um, yeah, anyways, so he was the one who told me, he suggested, why don't you apply to this craft show? Because I think you would really like it. I think it would be a good fit for you. So I listened to his advice and without ever having gone to that craft show before, without ever even looking it up online to see if there was any information about it, without even looking to see who past vendors were, I didn't do any of that. I was like, okay, Steve tells me this is a good craft show. I'm going to go apply for it. Everything's good. So I applied and I got in and I was so stoked. Like I was over the moon, but then all of a sudden I was just like, I don't know about, I don't know anything about selling at a craft show. I don't have a booth display. I don't have tablecloths. I don't have a sign to go in behind. I don't have a cash box. Um, all of these things. Maybe I had a cash box because I was selling pottery on the waterfront. So I think I had a cash box. Anyways, there was a huge learning curve. It's like, I didn't know what to do. Now, did I go to YouTube and research and learn about how to do a good first craft show? No, I didn't. <laughs> I just went and did it. Um, 
Was it a success? <sighs> I think it kind of was. So this craft show actually ended up being a juried show, but it was just juried by this one woman who was in charge of the show. So all I had to do was send her five pictures of my work. I'm trying to remember if I actually went in and brought her my work or if I just sent her the pictures. I can't remember. Um, so she wanted to see five pictures of my work and I just had to fill out this sort of two page info form with like business name and, you know, just little bits of information. I didn't have to give her an artist statement, um, nothing like that. It was pretty simple and straightforward, which looking back, uh, really good for my first craft show. I think it would have been super intimidating if I had to have filled out an artist statement and um, a process and making statement and all of that stuff. Um, the craft show cost almost $600. I had no idea if that was good or if that was bad. Um, come to find out, as a new potter starting out to pay $600 for a table, or it was a booth, uh, a booth and a table at a show, uh, might be a little on the steep side for your first craft show, just saying. Um, yeah. So did I then after paying almost $600 for the booth fee, sit down and calculate my expenses versus what I would have to sell versus what I should make? No, no, I did not. <laughs> I, I just kind of went into it. We I'm doing my first craft show. And looking back at it, I think maybe for your first show, that might've been the best approach that you could possibly take because I didn't have very much stress. I didn't put this expectation on myself. I was just happy to be doing it. So if you can possibly do that without worrying about breaking the bank, without worrying about whether or not you're gonna be able to eat that month, that would be a really great situation to put yourself in where it's just fun, it's a trial, and you're just testing out the waters. So you might ask, how did I get lucky at this craft show? Did it work out? Oh, uh, so yes, it worked out, kind of. I'll just put that little caveat in there. Um, so it ended up being a really good craft show. And Steve, my man Steve, he actually knew what he was talking about and he made a really good recommendation. The show was over 40 years old. It had been happening at a university campus gym for the same date for 40 years. It had a very loyal following of customers. It was in an amazing neighborhood. It was right down in the south end of Halifax, uh, university students, but also a lot of rich houses and a lot of wealthy people. And they would go to this show as opposed to a few of the others because it was always less crowded and the aisles were wider. So they liked the quieter atmosphere. The other vendors at the show were jewelers, but they were gold and silver jewelers. There were painters, uh, high-end photographers, uh, a lot of potters for the first couple of years, actually, but it didn't seem to affect my sales and your other sort of like really fancy uh, sculptures and fine crafted woven baskets, all of the things that you find at the craft shows. But my point is that it was a very high end craft show. So the people going there knew that they were going to buy high end products like art, pottery, fine crafted, local jewelry, um, local designer clothing, all of that stuff. So they were ready to spend the big bucks when they went. So that was amazing too. I had no idea what to look for when I went to this show. I ended up making about $2,000 my first show and I was over the moon. I thought I had made so much money in three days selling pottery I think it was about the same amount of money that I had made over the entire course of the summer selling pottery. And I was just, my face was glowing. I was floating five feet out of, into the air. Um, it was happy days. Now, looking back, um, 
I can see that maybe I didn't make that much money at all, especially with the high booth fee. And I had spent probably three months getting ready for this show, uh, September, October, and most of November. The show was at the end of November. Now, if I split what I would guess would be my profits, which I would say maybe a thousand dollars of that was my profits. And if I split that over the course of three months of making time, which was even longer back then because it took me longer to make stuff. I don't think I was making very much, but I didn't even look at that. I just saw the amount that I made and I thought I did a great job. So we won't begrudge past Amy of her joy and happiness. So we'll give myself a little pat on the back and we'll say, Amy, you did a great job. So I hope this story of my naive, past self when I was young and energetic uh, and entering into my first craft show during the busy Christmas season. I hope it encourages you. I hope it can make you smile and calm your nerves a little bit if you're going to be doing uh, maybe your first craft show coming up or if you just had it and you're kind of like shaking your head saying like, oh man, what even happened? I want you to know that I'm here to help. You've got this, you can do it, and everyone is cheering for you, and you're gonna have a great day. <laughs>